Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton High School for Hopkinton Hillers Varsity Baseball on HCAM. Tom Nappy and Larry Sacklad on the call, Bob Hamilton on the camera. As this afternoon, the Hillers welcome in the Westwood Wolverines, the Hopkinton Hillers 5-2 on the season. Westwood is 7-2 overall. Should be a great battle here at Hopkinton High School as we are ready for the first pitch. Brian Gone delivers to the second baseman, Aiden Fitzgibbon, to start this one off. And it is an 0-1 count after the first pitch. We'll take a look at the Hillers defense in just a moment gone working quickly here that one just outside and that will make it a one and one count on Aiden Fitzgib in the second baseman let's take a look at the Westwood lineup you got the second baseman Aiden Fitzgibbon batting right now Anthony Fabiano is batting second as that one is low and inside batting third is the designated hitter Ben Shields Noah Henderson the cleanup hitter playing first base Trevor Fahey the right fielder batting fifth Mark Bernardo, the catcher, hitting six, says there's a swinging strike, two and two. Brian Guarino, the shortstop, batting seventh. His brother, Callum Guarino, the third baseman, batting eighth. John Ricefielder is the center fielder, batting ninth. Thomas Keith is the left fielder and the odd man out of the batting order. The lineup and the pitch from gone. And this one is hit in the air, foul out of play to the right side. And as you can hear, a pretty strong wind here this afternoon at Hopkinton High School. The wind could get up to 16 miles an hour. According to the HCAM Weather Center, it is a 61 degree temperature. The sun is peaking out, but the wind will certainly have an effect on this game as Aiden Fitzgibbon goes down swinging, one away in the top of the first. And now the pitcher, Anthony Fabiano, will come to the plate. The Hillers are on now a five game win streak. They knocked off Dover Sherbert in 10 innings yesterday. 3-0 against Medway on Monday. And 5-0 on a two-hitter Bridgewater Reina on Saturday afternoon. It has certainly been an impressive run, and they've been playing a lot of games in the last few days. If I'm, uh, I believe it was uh, four games in the past five days. Brian Gaughan, his first trip as a starter, pitched one inning down at Bridgewater Raynham. His battery made Alex Reynolds both captains. Okay, the Hillers diamond after this pitch. There's a strike. Alex Reynolds is the catcher. Jake LeBlanc over at first base. Dawson McMillan at second base. Chris Burdick, the shortstop. Dylan O'Leary at third base from left to right. It is Ryan Wolf, Ben McKenzie, and Brett McIntyre. The lineup and the pitch, a swing strike there. One and two. Coach Simos has been blessed with excellent pitching. He's got seven or eight guys he can throw. Yeah, very good depth this year, that's for sure. And that was uh, one of the things they lacked last season. As Gone looks in, line up and the pitch. And that one grabs the outer corner. Fabiano didn't like that call, but that is the second strikeout of the top half of the first for gone. Well, he got caught up admiring that pitch. He was at the museum looking at the art. Ben Shields will step in. Nice to see Brian out there after being injured all last season and most of this year up until the Bridgewater Raynham game. And they certainly missed him last year. First pitch there is a strike. Ben Shields, a senior, hitting a 350 on this season. Seven for 20 overall at the plate for Westwood. Westwood at the top of the TVL in the current standings. Is that one just inside? One and one. A win here by Hopkinton will put them in a tie for losses two apiece. And if they both win out, they would have the tiebreaker. This one is hit in the air to left center, ranging over to make the catch is Ryan Wolf, and it's a one, two, three, top half of the first. We will head to the bottom of the first inning. Is it a scoreless game between the Westwood Wolverines and the Hopkinton Hillers? This is Hillers Baseball on HCAM. We are just about set for the bottom half of the first inning. Let's take a look at the Hopkinton Hillers batting order. Ben McKenzie, the center fielder, will lead things off. 
Steven Simos is the designated hitter hitting second. Alex Reynolds, the catcher, batting third. Jake LeBlanc, the first baseman in the cleanup spot. Dawson McMillan, the second baseman, batting fifth. Brian Gaughan, the pitcher, batting sixth. Brett McIntyre, the right fielder, batting seventh. Chris Burdick, the shortstop, hitting eighth. Ryan Wolf is the left fielder, batting ninth. Dylan O'Leary, the odd man out of the batting order, playing third base today for the Hillers. The Westwood Diamond consists of Anthony Fasciano as the pitcher. Noah Henderson is over at first base. Aiden Fitzgibbon at second base. Brian Guarino, the shortstop. Callum Guarino, the third baseman. Behind the home plate is Mark Bernardo. From left to right, it's Thomas Keith, John Reisfelder, and Trevor Fahey, the right fielder. And we are ready for the first pitch of the bottom of the first. And it is low for ball one to Ben McKenzie. Ben hit three hits in the win over Dover Sherburn yesterday. Over the weekend, he made a tremendous catch in left center field up against the fence at Bridgewater Raynham. And he has a hit here as that one will trickle down into left field. And that is going to be a leadoff single for the center fielder, Ben McKenzie. Bring up Steven Simos, the DH. Simos is a sophomore, currently one for 10 at the plate. Hoping to rack up some more hits. I think McKenzie is gonna try and check this kid's pickoff move. There's a strike. Ben, as you know, is a threat to steal at any time. So I'd imagine he'd try to get into the pitcher's head here. Ben McKenzie has six stolen bases on the season. And he is leading off the first base bag, the lineup and the pitch. Breaking ball gets in there, four strike two. I know Coach Simos wants this game very badly. Siano set to deliver, checking at first. McKenzie slides back. That ought to, that ought to give Ben a, a good read on his move. Maybe he'll take an extra shuffle step. Now one is low in the dirt, and McKenzie will stay put at first. Good reaction by the catcher, Mark Bernardo. Those are always the toughest to pick up as a base runner, the ones that are right between the legs of the catcher. You don't know how far back the ball goes. As Fabiano, the senior set to deliver. 450 ERA on the season for Fabiano. 1-0 record as he checks in at first. McKenzie back safely. That move is not going to be good enough to keep Ben McKenzie there if uh, Coach Simos wants him to go. Fabiano has pitched nine and a third of an inning so far this season. Breaking pitch fouled away. Count remains one and two. Alex Reynolds, the catcher, on deck. There's some issue over the weekend at Bridgewater Raynham where the umpires. As this is a high fly ball foul territory left side, is it playable? No. Just out of the reach of Thomas Keith. The umpires drew a line at the uh, home plate side of the batter's box and they were uh, intimating that the Hiller players were crowding the plate. And Steve Simos has got his back foot right on the line, maybe slightly out of the batter's box. Fabiano will check in once again and that was close there, but McKenzie back safely. McKenzie likes to play those games, they'll lead off the bag, try to get in the pitcher's head a little bit and challenge them to throw over. Wind up and the pitch. This is hit into right field and it is going to get past the reach of Trevor Fahey. McKenzie rounding second base. Right behind him is Simos. Over to third he goes, getting the wave home. The throw in is not gonna be in time and it's one nothing Hillers. An RBI double by Simos and Hopkinton strikes first. Well, he's on a streak now, Stevie Simos. He hit a double at the Bridgewater Raynham game and you saw Ben McKenzie go from first to third on that hit. 
Well, maybe it was a blur. And that'll bring up Alex Reynolds, the catcher. Samos over at second base, no outs for the Hillers in the bottom of the first. That one in the dirt. Nice play by Bernardo behind home plate. The Hillers finally got a home run yesterday from Captain Alex Reynolds up on the left center field. He's hitting over 600, I imagine, by now. And he had three hits yesterday. 545 for Reynolds. That one down low. Six for 11 overall. Well, they might have not put last uh, yesterday's game in the stats yet. Because I don't see the home run there. Wind up and the pitch. Whatever it is, I think he's leading the TVL and hitting. Yeah, he has certainly hit well to start the season, that's for sure. 2-1 pitch here to Reynolds. Simos leading a bit off of second base. In the dirt, that gets by Simos taking off and he will be safely aboard over at third base on the wild pitch. Now he's gonna come home and he will score as Bernardo had trouble tracking down that ball and they're gonna send him back to third. So they'll give him the one base, so take away that run there. Ball gets stuck under the backstop. Wishful thinking there by Simos. A little time as the ball, I think, still jammed back there in the backstop. Alex knows the backstop area pretty well, I imagine. Beginning of the year, he checked to see whether there were any divots, holes, anything back there so he knows when he goes into a slide how far he has to go. And this is down third baseline foul. On a wild pitch or a pass ball. Maybe the uh, Westwood third baseman watched uh, last game on H cam and saw Alex uh, pull the ball. He's really playing right on the line. Full count on Reynolds. He will hit this one in the air over to right field. It is playable and the catch will be made. Simos will hold up at third. So Reynolds flies out for the first out of the inning. And that'll bring up Jake LeBlanc, the first baseman. Jake had a two-run RBI on Saturday against Bridgewater Raynham to make the score five to nothing. It was in no man's land, but the runners were moving. He played two. Wind up and the pitch. Just outside. LeBlanc through the first week of the season went four for 13 at the plate. And there's a strike there. One and one count on the first baseman. All he needs to do is hit a 95 footer and that'll play Stevie Simos. Swinging strike. Dawson McMillan due up on deck. Leg lift and the pitch. In there for strike three. Gets him looking. Two away. Dawson McMillan, the second baseman, will step in. Lefty awaits the pitch. Dawson is always a threat to lay down a bunt. Very good landing down the left side. He tried a drag bunt, I believe, on Saturday, but didn't quite get there. One and zero pitch to McMillan is just upstairs. Two and zero. Brian gone, due up on deck, shall McMillan reach. Line up and the pitch, 
As this one is hit in the air to deep right field towards the fence, and that one is going to drop down for Three a bagger. hit. Simos is already in to score. McMillan around second base. The throw in is cut off, and that is a stand-up triple and an RBI for Dawson McMillan. Whatever he was eating over the winter added to his uh, frame. Probably some weight work, too. That's the farthest I've ever seen Dawson hit a ball. That one was almost gone, and they did install the fence out there in right field. I still don't like that fence out there, Tom. I like it. I think there could have been a couple homers already this season if that was there. On the flip side of that, Dawson McMillan would have uh, easily made it home. That one almost got by Bernardo, but a nice job keeping it in front of him on the wild pitch. 1-0 and oh is the count on Brian Gone. Dawson McMillan over at third base. Two outs, but two runs in for the Hillers. Brian throws left and hits right. He's the only one on the team that does that. In the dirt. Bernardo has been hard at work to start off this game behind home plate. Dawson can get a little bit better lead as uh, Brian Gaughan is blocking the catcher if he wants to throw down there. Fabiano with the long stare and delivers. There's a strike, two and one. <laughs> Fabiano set to deliver. And that one is low, but nice job by Bernardo once again. Three and one. On deck for the Hillers is the right fielder, Brett McIntyre. I'd like to see Brian get his first hit of the year. Show his mother that he drank enough milk over the winter time. That one's inside. Runner held up at third and gone draws the walk. So we have runners on the corners for the Hillers. Two outs, Brett McIntyre to the plate. Two nothing Hillers lead here in the bottom of the first. I think Brian will be very careful if he wants to steal a base to not get his shoulder involved. He'll definitely go in feet first. And Viano set to deal. That one's in the dirt. One and oh. Cloud starting to Roll in from left to right. No rain in the forecast, however, which is very encouraging with the way the weather has been throughout this spring season so far. That's okay by me. One and one on McIntyre. Brett made three tremendous catches in the Bridgewater Rainham game. I think Steve Simos is feeling his best defensive outfield combination. That one's today. out of play, one and two. With McKenzie in center and Ryan Wolf in left. And I think he went all out for this with this lineup. And this will be a huge win, as you mentioned, for the Hillers. Big time in first place at the top of the TBL. Fabiano checks in at first, runner back safely. Brian Gaughan's injury was to his non-throwing shoulder. He had labrum surgery, so he went back with his pitching hand, back to the bag. This one is popped up in the infield grass. Third baseman ranges over and is called off by Fabiano who will make the catch and that'll be the third and final out of the bottom of the first but not before the Hillers plate two runs it's two nothing Hopkinton heading to the second inning top half of the second inning a two nothing lead for the Hopkinton Hillers Westwood will send their four five and six hitters up to the plate Noah Henderson, the first baseman, will start things off, followed by Trevor Fahey, the right fielder, and Mark Bernardo, the catcher, to face Brian Gaughan in his second inning of work. Here's a 1-2-3 first inning. 
pair of strikeouts by Gone and a fly out by the DH, Ben Shields. And a nice start for the Hillers offensively. An RBI double scored Ben McKenzie and then Dawson McMillan hit an RBI triple to score Simos. That one is inside, 1-0. Well, you know the old adage, pitching and defense wins ball games, but you can't win ball games zero to zero, so you gotta have timely hitting. And that one hit him. Henderson will get the free pass to first base. Taking one off the foot there. Trevor Fahey, the right fielder, will step in. Brian Gaughan has a very good pickoff move to first base, so the Westwood uh, runner, better stay a little close. Trevor Fahey, 348 batting average on the season. That one is low and inside, 1-0. And Alex Reynolds, Reynolds, of course, is not afraid to back pick the runner. From the stretch is gone. Leg left and the pitch. Outside, 2-0. Henderson is leading off of first base. and leading once again. Gone looks over and now deals. That one inside, 3-0. Well, there is a strong wind that's been blowing around on and off so far throughout this game. You wonder how that is affecting the pitchers so far. Especially on the breaking pitches, it has to have at least a little bit of an effect. There's a strike, three and one. Alex Reynolds taking command, going out to visit Brian Gone after falling behind in the count. Leg left hand, the pitch. There's ball four, so Fahey draws the walk. And Coach Simos, as you mentioned, Larry, does have a pair out in the warm up area. I think in case Gone runs into trouble, of course, when you're coming back from a season-long injury, sometimes it could take a couple games until you're back to your full form as Mark Bernardo will step in. Two on, no outs for Westwood. The bunt pulled back low, and a runner from second going to take off the throw to third will get away from O'Leary. Into left field it goes. That's too bad because it was a pretty good throw by Reynolds. Fahey advances to second. Dillon was playing in at the cut of the grass. And when the runner went, it was tough for him to backpedal over to the bag and find the bag. That's why it ticked off the end of his glove. But that's aggressive base running by Westwood. I'll give him credit for that. Now you have two in scoring position with no outs. There's a strike, one and one. That's Cole Dregsbeck warming up in the bullpen, Tom. One just inside, two and one. Mark Bernardo, 222 on this season. He scored a pair of runs and driven in one. From the stretch is gone. Leg left and the pitch. That one is inside, three and one. The umpire's not giving Brian Gone anything here today. Hope for a little hometown discount, but it's not, not to be. So far, the strike zone has been called right down the middle. This one up the middle on the ground. Glove by the shortstop. Throw to first. They do get the out, but a run will score. Noah Henderson comes around. It's a two to one ball game. Fahey moves up to third on the sacrifice ground out by Bernardo. Alex Reynolds going to give the signal as to whether he's going to. I'll check that. I'll bring up Brian Guarino, the shortstop. Runner on third, one in. As this one is going to get away, Reynolds will be quick to chase it down. Fahey will hold up. Oh, and they're gonna say it hit him. That's the second hit batter of the inning. 
Maybe the wind has uh, something to do with the balls hitting their batters today. Maybe not. Well, it was a solid first inning for Gone, but a little bit wild in this one. Now Alex will relay the signals to the middle infielders. Callum Guarino, the third baseman now, up to bat. Runners on the corners, one out, one in for Westwood. That one is outside, runner taking off from first. The throw to second is a perfect one, and they got him. Ryan Guarino caught stealing. You cannot ask for any better of a throw than that throw by Alex Reynolds. His pop time is just tremendous. It's not uh, Christian Vasquez 1.67, 1 but it's probably in the low two somewhere. That was a huge out for the Hillers as that one is upstairs, 3-0. Pop time is the time from the catcher's glove to the fielder's glove, and they measure it in tenths of a second. Yeah, Reynolds certainly a catcher you do not want to test too much as there's a strike. The stretch is gone. The wind blowing, the windup and the pitch, swinging strike. I think he pulled the string on that one, Tom. Only count two and two. From the stretch, leg lift and the pitch, swinging strike, and he got him. So that out that Reynolds got. Catching Guarino, stealing ends up being a huge one as it shuts down a potential Westwood rally. And the Hillers hold Westwood to one in the top half of the second. It is the Hillers leading Westwood two to one on H camp. Bottom half of the second, a two one Hillers lead over Westwood. Eight, nine and one hitters due up for Hopkinton. Chris Burdick, Ryan Wolf and Ben McKenzie. The wind up and the pitch. This one is hit foul out of play. Anthony Fabiano out there for his second inning of work. Chris is hitting uh, in the high 400s, I think. He'll be heading to BC next year. There's strike two. Needs a haircut though, but we'll talk about that after the end of the game. <laughs> Wind Wind up in the pitch from Fabiano is strike three. It's the second strikeout so far of the game by Anthony Fabiano. Ryan Wolf will step in. Or excuse me, it's going to be Dylan O'Leary stepping in. We don't have a batting out of order situation here. Well, O'Leary initially on the lineup was the odd man out, so they must have subbed him in. And now Coach Simos is going to talk to the umpire, and you wonder if that was a mistake on the lineup card. And if Wolf was supposed to be the odd man out and not O'Leary. And you wonder if they're going to make him send up Wolf here because of the lineup card he submitted. And they indeed are going to have to send up Brian Wolf. Well, no pitch was thrown, so no harm, no foul. Yeah. And I believe in that situation, if you did stick with O'Leary, since he's your odd man out, you would uh, lose the potential to have another odd man out. You'd have to stick with uh, nine players. And you couldn't have that 10th player out there. Wind up and the pitch. That one is fouled into the backstop. Pretty close to Bob there. Bob was ready to catch that one with his bare hand. Fabiano set the deal. That one inside, one and one to Wolf. Ryan, not a threat to go deep but he will put the ball in play. There's a strike. And actually, I think what would have happened if they did stick with O'Leary, which they did put in Wolf, 
they would have lost the DH, so Simos would have had to go out there in the field or come out of the game. That one is outside, two and two. So the difference between coaches here is the Westwood coach is calling the pitches and Steve Simos is letting Alex Reynolds call the game. That one outside, full count now on Wolf. That's showing a lot of confidence in Alex Reynolds as a game manager. Certainly is. There's a swinging strike. Second strikeout of the inning for Fabiano, two away. And now Ben McKenzie will step in. He singled and scored a run in the first inning. This kid's got a sneaky little fastball. I had a little giddy up. Likes to throw it out there on the corners as well. Here's a breaking pitch for a strike. Nice rise on that one. 0-1 on McKenzie. Ben is certainly worth the price of admission for those of you who have not caught a Hiller's game and see this game broadcast. Come down. You'll enjoy it. It's really good baseball. One and one. This is hit in the air right side and out of play. One and two. I don't think anybody's going deep today, Tom, with this wind. And this is going to be a base hit as that'll drop into left center. McKenzie around first. The ball rolling around on the hill out there in that left center area, and McKenzie is avail is safe on second with the double. Hit it in the same spot as he did in the first inning, except a little bit harder. Yeah, good piece of hitting there. And that was really rolling around on that hill out there, and that's one of the benefits for the offensive team is that hill out there, because if you're able to hit that thing, it's going to roll around for sure if it lands. And this one is hit in the air to right field. That's going to get by the reach of the second baseman. Around third comes McKenzie, and he will score the third Hiller's run of the game. And Steven Simos coming through big so far today. That is an RBI single in his second RBI of the game. He is on a run, Stevie Simos. He must have taken some batting practice with his dad over the weekend. I guess so. Now it is a 3-1 lead for the Hillers. Alex Reynolds steps in. That was a pick. And he's taking off from first, and he will head over to second. The pickoff got away from Henderson. So Simos over at second now. Stevie knows how to re read balls in the dirt as good as anybody. So he'll be ready to jump on anything. He was halfway down to third base. That one is low. 1-0 and oh on Reynolds. Simos leading off of second. Fabiano deals. Simos was halfway down the base path. Now he will head back to second base. That one upstairs, 2-0. A very smart base runner. He doesn't think the Westwood catcher can nab him sauntering down to the th third base. Oh, no one covering second base. And there he goes. And he's going to head over to third, but it's a good throw down the line, and they got him. No problem for Mark Bernardo. So Simos is caught stealing, and that'll wrap up the bottom half of the second inning, but not before the Hillers played another run. It is 3-1 Hopkinton heading to the third. Top half of the third inning, a 3-1 Hillers lead. Westwood will bring their 9-1 and 2 hitters to the plate. John Reisfelder, the center fielder. Aiden Fitzgibbon, the second baseman. And Anthony Fabiano, the pitcher. Brian Gahn out there for his second inning of work. Leg left hand the pitch, and excuse me, his third inning of work. Thank you, Larry. 2-3, what's the difference, right? No difference. <laughs> Still a seven inning game. That one inside, one and one. Stevie Simos getting thrown out at third base. 
Coach Simos will never criticize a ball player for being too aggressive. He will criticize, well, maybe that's too hard of a word. Going outside, two and one. He will educate the player for being too passive or withhold dinner in the case of his son. Yeah, the problem was they had, they had him down. They knew he was gonna take off there. Gave it away. And that one outside is gone. Continues to have a few control issues. He had a couple of control issues in the second inning. He hit a pair of batters and walked one. Gave up a run, but no hits. A breaking ball doesn't want to turn over for him for some reason. Maybe the wind has something to do with it. He'll likely go to the fastball here, and he will for strike two. Let's see if he gives up on the breaking ball. He continues to have these control issues. Fastball there, just a bit low. Ricefelder draws the walk. Aiden Fitzgibbon will step in. He struck out in the first inning. Runner on first, no outs. Don will check over with a slow throw. Runner is back. That was his dummy move, I have a feeling. Westwood runner is not taking umbrage. Takes a look at first, and now he'll throw over more fast, but it's going to get away from LeBlanc, and Reisfelder will head to second base uncontested. Aaron throw there. Better move, but not better outcome. Out comes Coach Simos to have a discussion with yeah. Captain Brian Gone. Coach Simos and Alex Reynolds. And they are going to continue to have some warm up action as well. And they also have someone heading back to the bench from the warm up area. It's Cole Drake's back, so. So he might be ready. If Gone continues to run into trouble. Runner leading off of second, leg lift in. The pitch is going to hit him. Third hit batter from Gone. First and second now, and Anthony Fabiano will come up to the plate. No outs, two on. And I think this might be it for Gone. Coach Simos coming out again along with catcher Alex Reynolds. Let's see if he takes the ball. Taking yep, the ball. And he will, and he doesn't want to risk any further damage or any more injuries. Clearly gone, not at 100% yet, but certainly has had his uh, good moments out there on the mound, but we'll just have to work out a little bit of uh, control issues, but we will have a relief pitcher for the Hillers as Cole Dragsbeck will come in to the game to take over, and he will face Anthony Fabiano with two on and no outs in the third inning for Westwood. We'll take a quick timeout on HCAN. Cole Dragsbeck into the game, and he will face Anthony Fabiano, who will step in. Two on for Westwood, no outs. Sidearm hurler set to deliver. Ball one to Fabiano. Let's see what the wind does with the side armor here. Hopefully he'll start the ball inside and the ball catch the outside corner. Drake Beck looks at second and deals. There's a strike. He pitched the score this inning uh, Saturday at Bridgewater Raynham as the, all the Hopkinton pitchers Sent out six pitchers, gave up only two hits. Runner leading off of second. Check swing, couldn't hold, there's a strike, one and two. Line up in the pitch, that one is Going to get away from him. Looks like he got stuck in his hand a little there. Two and two. I used my crude iPhone this weekend in major leagues. They want you to pitch within 20 seconds. And 
and all the Hillers pitchers were between 9.3 and 10.3. All right, and at the minor league levels, they have the clock running. And that one is going to be low in the dirt. Get away from Reynolds. Both runners will push up. It'll be Fitzgibbon up to second, Reisfelder up to third. So now you have two runners in scoring position with no outs. A 2-2 count on the pitcher, Anthony Fabiano. Wind up and the pitch. And he's going to draw the walk. Bases loaded. Ben Shields to the plate. Shields flew out his last time up. The leading hitter. Infield is in. They want the run cut down at the plate. The outfield out there pretty deep. Oh, and no doubles outfield. Checking at second, the runner was way off, and they are not going to get him. Couldn't land the tag, and the ball did come out of Dawson McMillan's glove. I think Alex Reynolds called for that play, because that was very, very close. Yeah, if that did not come out of McMillan's glove, they definitely would have had him. Would have been a huge pickoff. Line up in the pitch. There's a strike. Oh, and one. The cleanup hitter Noah Henderson due up on deck for Westwood. Line up and the pitch. And he's going to make contact. Roll it over to the second baseman, throw to second for one, and that's all we'll get. A run will score. John Ricefelder comes around, and it's a Sacrifice for Shields. Fitzgibbon is going to move up to third, and they got Fabiano on the force out. Alex Reynolds is alerting Dawson McMillan and Chris Burdick as to what he's going to do if the runner takes off. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. So a 3-2 game now with Noah Henderson, the cleanup hitter, at the plate. We got one out in the inning, runners on the corners. And that run is charged to Brian Gone. That one outside, one and one. He came out of the game after the first two hitters of the top of the third. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away, and that nearly got a piece of the Hillers coaching staff. Cole hasn't shown his pickoff move, and I have a funny feeling that Westwood, Westwood runner is getting a little bit too far off the bag. Line up and the pitch, and he reached for that one. That was going to be ball two, but instead it's a strikeout. And that is a huge out for the Hillers. Two away in the inning, Trevor Fahey, the right fielder, will step in. Now the infield can move back. And Alex can go down to second base should they take off. Well, he was just going for contact there to try to score the run. As the lefty awaits the pitch. Oh, he's going. Runner taking off from first, and he turned towards second. He has him, and now in a pickle. The runner hesitated, could have made it to second. The pitcher wasn't even going to throw, and the run will score. But they will get the job done. And that was a pretty good play there by Westwood that will get the out to end the inning. We will head to the bottom half of the third. And... The game is going to be tied, I believe, in that situation, the run would count. So three to three, a brilliant play there by uh, Westwood, Larry. Absolutely, you know, sort of a schoolyard play. You don't see that often. 
runner intentionally got himself into a pickle. Yep. And while he was being pickled, the man from third scampered home. Yeah, Hillers fall uh, right into the trap. So a tie game as we head to the bottom of the third on HCAM. Bottom of the third inning as this game now tied up at three. An interesting inning for Westwood in the top half of the third. John Reisfelder walked. And then you had Aiden Fitzgibbon get hit by a pitch. We'll continue the recap, but right now Alex Reynolds stepping in for the Hillers. Three, four, and five do up. Reynolds, LeBlanc, and McMillan. Pretty good part of the batting order here as he will get a piece, and that'll drop into center field. A leadoff single in the bottom of the third for Reynolds. Wonder if Coach Simons is going to run for him. I don't know what the re-entry rules are. Well, yeah, they could uh, pretty much pinch run whenever they choose, as LeBlanc will step in. Although Alex is not a fast runner, he's a smart runner. So he'll do, he will take the extra base. Line up and the pitch. Breaking pitch just outside. So Ricefielder walked, Fitzgibbon was hit by a pitch and then gone, came out of the game. Anthony Fabiano then drew the walk. Ben Shields hit into a sacrifice force out, which scored John Ricefelder. And then the Hillers fell into a Trap that allowed Westwood to score another run as there's a swinging strike. And Fitzgibbon came around as Shields intentionally got caught in the pickoff. Brilliant base running play by Westwood. And the Hillers fell for the trap. And I'm sure uh, Coach Simos will have a lot of coaching in that situation. He already did. That one is just high, two and one on LeBlanc. They will work on that in their next practice or he will talk it up in the next practice as to what to do in that situation. Should they come up again? He's always coaching, and that's going to. This is a little bloop into left center. That's going to drop down for a base hit. So now you'll have runners on first and second. Reynolds up to second. We'll blank over at first. Two on, no outs for the Hillers as they try to get another rally going. Dawson McMillan to step in. He had a RBI triple in the first inning. Lefty will await the pitch. Hopefully Westwood doesn't have a play on with the catcher because uh, Jake LeBlanc is about four or five steps off first base. You always got to worry about that timing play with the first baseman sneaking in behind the runner. Time called. Now we are ready. The bunt. It's slow roller on the infield grass, bobbled by Fabiano. Everybody's safe. Base is loaded. And the runner from third, Reynolds, thought about trying to sneak home, but then Fabiano turned around to hold him up. He did throw over to first as well, hoping to get McMillan on the pickoff attempt. So Reynolds up to third, LeBlanc up to second, and now you have McMillan aboard at first. And that was a beauty of a bunt right up the middle. That's the way he likes to do it. He'll bunt anywhere, anytime. Cole Dragsbeck steps in. He came in the game for Brian Gaughan, a pitch. And he will hit for the Hillers with the bases loaded and no outs. That pitch outside, 1-0. If he ever has to put on a suicide squeeze play, he's got Dawson McMillan, Ryan Wolf, and Brett McIntyre, who are very experienced at getting the bat on the ball and putting it where they need to. And there's a strike. Westwood Wolverines led by head coach Jim Van Aria. Hillers led by Steven Simos. Pretty good chess match we got going here between the two coaching staffs. As this one's fouled away, one and one. Line up and the pitch, and this is hit up the left side, past the glove of the third baseman, Callum Guarino, and Reynolds is in to put the Hillers back ahead, four to three. It's an RBI single for Dragsbeck. LeBlanc up to third, McMillan up to second, bases loaded, no outs, and now the Hillers have the lead back with Brett McIntyre coming to the plate. I think the Westwood coach is toying with the idea of going to talk to his hurler. But 
instead he's running signs to the catcher. No warm up action yet for Westwood. There's a strike to McIntyre who flew out his only time up in the first inning. He looked like he was going to jump on that pitch. There it Gets is. Gets a piece of this one, and the third baseman will glove it, throw home, and they will get him at home plate. Good play by Callum Guarino. So McIntyre reaches on the fielder's choice. Five to two fielder's choice. There's third. a blank thrown out. McMillan up to third. Drags back up to second. Third baseman initially was going to turn around and touch third, but then he thought better of it, went home. Still only one out in the inning with bases loaded. Now Chris Burdick, the shortstop at the plate. Takes a strike there. Brother Timmy, I'm sure is dying to pinch hit for his brother. Show him how it's done, but he's an underclassman. There's strike two. Nice breaking pitch. Gets a piece of this one right up the middle, but glove by the shortstop to flip to second for one. The throw to first is off the mark. Uh, McMillan already in, and now another runner is going to score as well. Dragsbeck comes around. They could have got it out of the inning with the double play, but the errant throw allows two more hillers, runs the score, and it is 6-3 Hopkinton. When this is your home field, you know how the balls are going to bounce on overthrows. The opposing team generally does not. Now, would you call that an error? Yeah, that was a throwing error. Yeah. Westwood is a throwing error. Mr. Hopkinton. Yeah. <laughs> So they got McIntyre out, there is two outs. Runner on first, but two more runs in for the Hillers. 6-3 ball game. There's a strike, runner taking off from first, throw to second, and he is safe. Stolen base for Burdick. As Wolf at bat with an 0-1 count. This game's had a little bit of everything so far. Nice aggressive base running, a base hit will play Chris Burdick. In the dirt. We've got two excellent catchers in this game. Two catchers that have been heavy at work too. Fabiano set to deal. Gets it right in there for a strike, one and two. Well, two of the three runs that scored are unearned. Well, not quite sure why the uh, middle infield is pinched for Westwood right now. He's hit in the air foul out of play. Count remains one and two. They're leaving the left side wide open, and they're playing Ryan Wolf to pull. It's a little befuddling to me, but I'm not the Westwood coach. This one is fouled away. Good battle going on here between Wolf and Fabiano. And he's going to get a piece of this one. It'll land into left field. Coming around third is Burdick. The throw in is not going to be in time. And the Hillers played another run. An RBI hit for Ryan Wolf. Wolf advances the second on the throw in, but gets the run in, and Burdick comes flying around third base and scores all the way from second. It is now seven to three Hillers, and Ben McKenzie will step up to the plate. So maybe that little mix up in the lineup, not such a bad thing for the Hillers as Wolf gets the job done. Fortuitous, how's that for a college level word, fortuitous. I like it. That one low, 1-0 on McKenzie, who is having a great day, two for two. And season. 
Yep. So for those of you that have not come down to see a Hiller's game, this is a kid you want to see. All five tools. Hiller is right now red hot. He might beat that out. As he grounds this one, takes a couple hops, throw to first is in time. McKenzie goes five to three, but the Hillers plate four runs in the bottom of the third, and they now lead Westwood seven to three as we head to the top of the fourth on HCAM. Top half of the fourth inning, a seven to three lead for the Hillers. Cole Drags back out there for his second inning of work, and we will recap that crazy bottom of the third for the Hillers in just a moment. As the first hitter steps in for Westwood and takes ball one. We do have a pinch hitter as well for the Wolverines. That one is in there for a strike, one and one. Going with the lefty-righty matchup here. Set to deliver. Hit in the air, left side. An infield fly, and it's caught by the shortstop. And Shea, the sophomore, will pop out for the first out of the inning. And that will bring up Mark Bernardo, the catcher. Sun's starting to peek out once again. It's always a great sight to see with all the rain that has been throughout the area lately. That one is just outside, 1-0. Oh. That one low, 2-0. Oh. There's a strike, two and one. Well, this game has been a lengthy affair so far with a whole lot of craziness in the fourth inning, over an hour old. But a good battle here between two of the best teams in the TVL as that one's outside, three and one. Let's recap that bottom of the third for the Hillers. Reynolds started things off with a single, a blank a single, McMillan then a single as that one is outside, there's a walk. And Bernardo will be aboard at first base with one out. Brian Guarino to the plate. And then you had Cole Drazebeck with an RBI single to score the first of the four runs of the inning. And then uh, Brett McIntyre ended up reaching on a force out, on a fielder's choice rather. There's a strike. And then Burdick reached on an error. The error allowed two Hillers runs to score. It was a throwing error on the uh, double play attempt. It was a 6-4-3 attempt, and the error came in the exchange from the second baseman to the first baseman. That allowed McMillan and Dragsbeck to both score, and then an RBI single by Ryan Wolf to score Burdick. Two unearned runs in the inning for the Hillers. This is hit in the air, a high fly ball to shallow right field, and the second baseman ranges over, and it went off his glove. He will drop it, but the throw to second is in time, and they will get the lead runner, so you could actually score that one a fielder's choice. And if Bernardo went immediately, he could have had two on with one out. I think one on with two outs now. Callum Guarino awaits the pitch. That one is low and outside. I think the runner thought uh, the ball would be caught. But uh, as it was in the Red Sox game last night where they pulled a triple play. Checking at first, runner back safe. Everybody was lost. They thought there was infield fly. One of the more crazy plays you'll see in Major League Baseball. Yeah, sometimes those situations work, work out for you. There's a strike. K-1 
Alam Guarino struck out his only time up in the second inning. And he will hit this one over to the shortstop, throw to first, no problem. And that will be the third and final out of the top half of the fourth inning. To the bottom of the fourth we go. The Hillers leading Westwood 7-3 on HCAM. Bottom of the fourth inning, a 7-3 lead for the Hillers. Due up for Hopkinton is the two, three, and four hitters. And Steven Simos, an early candidate for the player of the game, will start things off here in the inning. Doubled in the first, knocked in a run, scored a run, and hit an RBI single in the second, and hits this one over to center field, a deep center field. But there to make the catch is John Reisfelder, one away. Truly unfortunate he's got an arm injury. Would give uh, Alex Reynolds some relief. Alex caught 10 innings yesterday in a win over Dover Sherburn. Hiller is on a five game winning streak, trying to make it six here. Breaking pitch will grab the outer corner, 0 and 1 on Reynolds. Reynolds one for two on the day. Hit a single and scored a run in the third. That one just outside, one and one. I like the poise of this Westwood pitcher, Fabiano. Doesn't seem to get rattled despite some faux pas behind him. Yeah, and there's been a couple of Hiller's rallies, but he's managed to put those behind him. That one down low, two and one. Line up in the pitch. This is hit in the air to right field, to deep right field, and that is going to drop down for a base hit. Reynolds around first, heading to second. The throw in is cut off by the shortstop, and it's a stand-up double for Reynolds. Now will Coach Simos run for Alex Reynolds to get an insurance run in? That is the question. Now I'll bring up Jake LeBlanc. And so far, it looks like he's gonna leave him in there. Jake's been hitting the ball well and knocking in some runners. Wind up and the pitch. That one up high. Alex is not a threat to steal, but he is a threat to irritate. Blank one for two, single in the third. There's a strike. Alex being a catcher, he can read the ball in the dirt better than anyone. Leg lift and the pitch outside. And we're gonna. I well, hope. Well, is it a pinch, pinch runner? Run. Yeah. yeah, we will. That's Sasquatch Kelly, as uh, Reynolds has uh, tagged him with that nickname. It's Brendan Kelly, Sasquatch Kelly, the pinch runner for the Hillers. Six, six one, two hundred and ten pounds. Probably start in the middle on the uh, Hillers basketball club if Coach Keen has his way. Outside. Three star athlete. Three one count on LeBlanc. Well, he'll certainly be uh, someone to watch in the coming years. I'm sure the college folk will be sniffing around. And this one is going to drop fairly into left field right on the chalk. Here comes and, Sasquatch. Yeah, another Hillers run will score, and that is going to make it 8 3 Hillers. An RBI double for LeBlanc. That was right on the line. That was a beauty, and it looks like we might have a pitching change here. We'll see if he takes the ball. So far, he has not taken the ball. But there is no warm-up action, so it could be someone in the game that would come, un come in for him if he continues to struggle. 
Dawson McMillan to step in. Good move by Coach Simos, pinch running for Alex. Yeah, it paid off there, big time. McMillan two for two, had an RBI triple in the first, Singleton scored a run in the third. Having a nice day, there's a strike. Too bad his brothers E.G. and Andrew don't come down to watch Dawson play. He went to all their games, wherever they were. Set to deal, that one inside. So I'm shaming them on H cam. <laughs> Well, they're probably, maybe they got work. <laughs> they're golfing. Down the first baseline, gloved by the first baseman, Noah Henderson. He'll step on the bag and get the out, but LeBlanc will advance to third. So the three unassisted pushes LeBlanc to third. Two outs, however, and Cole Dragsbeck will step in. Line up and the pitch. He's going to get a piece of this one. It'll drop into right field, and it's 9-3 Hillers. LeBlanc comes around to score on the RBI single. Hillers have scored in every inning in this game. Two in the first, one in the second, four in the third. And two more here in the bottom of the fourth. Line up and the pitch. That one is going to grab the outer corner on Brett McIntyre. Oh, and one. Two out, Cole will be going on contact. But Fabiano hasn't uh, thrown over there very much. Good eye by Brett. That one upstairs. Leading off of first. There's a strike. One and two. I thought I picked up a signal from the Westwood coach on a pick. Went upstairs. Now we'll Went to his cheek. Two and two on McIntyre. He'll get a good piece of this one over to left field. It goes over the head of the left fielder, Thomas Keith. Lead runner is being waved around third. Here comes Dregs back, and he is in to score the 10th Hiller's run of the afternoon. An RBI double from Brett McIntyre. That ought to make his dad happy, his mom happy, his grandma happy, Bubby happy, Uncle Jim happy. He belted that one. To say the least, that one really carried out there, and now that'll bring up Chris Burdick. Foul that one away. Brett showed some decent speed down there. He's got size 11 shoes now. Everyone in the Hiller's batting order, except Chris Burdick, has a base hit. Burdick did reach on an error in the third and scored a run. He'll foul that one away, 0-2. He needs to get on here or might be a little ugly at the dinner table tonight with his brother Timmy. Runner on second, two outs, three runs in for the Hillers in this inning. That one into the backstop. Set to deliver. That one just outside. One and two. Fred is getting a nice, juicy secondary lead down there. Up the third base side, and that is a fair ball. 
The runner being waved around third. He'll come around to score. And that is going to make it 11-3 Hillers. I think the uh, Westwood coach is going to have something to say about that. I don't know. I think the umpire had a pretty good view of it, and there's no argument, so count it. Well, they will vocal about it, put it that way. An RBI double for Burdick. McIntyre scores, and it's now an 11-3 lead for the Hillers. Ryan Wolf at the plate. That one inside. Well, no relief uh, pitcher yet for Westwood. They're leaving Fabiano out here. Maybe they're uh, thinking about ending this one a little bit early. That one downstairs. 2-0. That was a nice base hit by Chris Burdick. I thought it was foul. The umpire thought it was fair. We'll go with a fair ball, all right? I agree. And now everyone in the Hiller's batting order does have a base hit. As that one grabs the outside corner. Two and one. Everyone in the Hiller's batting order, except Ryan Wolf, has scored at least one run. There's another strike. Two and two. Well, I jinxed the hit. Let's see if I could jinx a run here. Maybe Ryan Wolf can hit one out. I think you got the power to do that. That one inside. Full count. The full count, Chris doesn't wanna just take off here. Wants to make sure there's some contact. Set to deal. That one is foul. Temperature feels like it dropped 10, 10 degrees or so. Yeah, the wind certainly making it a cold feeling out here. Ooh, Wolf takes that one right off the arm, it looked like, and that one certainly stings. So now you have runners on first and second, and I think this is going to be it for Fabiano. What's the left fielder or the third baseman? I'll add my commentary in uh, for yesterday's dover Sherburn game. Uh, not sure whether dover Sherburn moms and dads watch HCAM, but... Their starting pitcher won 131 in 10 innings. And uh, that's way, way too much. You don't see a major league pitcher throw 131 pitches. Coach Simos would never do that to a kid. A win is not worth it to ruin a kid's arm. So maybe the Dover Sherburn parents watching that game have already talked to the AD to talk to the coach to not do that again. The new pitcher for Westwood is Hannon. And yeah, I'm not sure how many uh, Fabiano threw, but in any case, he's out of the game now. And we will take a timeout on HCAM with the Hillers leading Westwood 11 to three. Continuing on with the bottom of the fourth inning, a new pitcher for Westwood. As Hannon is into the game, unlisted on the Westwood roster, but on the lineup card, his last name is Hannon. And he is in to take over for Anthony Fabiano as he delivers that one up high to Ben McKenzie. What is the mercy rule, uh, Tom? And uh... well, you got to be up by uh, 10 runs for the mercy rule and play at least four full innings. That one's fouled away. Yanked foul. I believe they would play the top of the fifth if the Hillers uh, put the mercy rule in effect. Wind up and the pitch. That one is upstairs. Two and one. This pitcher coming in cold. Yeah, came over from left field. That 
one is down low. Got away briefly from Bernardo, but he catches up with it. Chris Burdick didn't want to make the third out of the inning with this catcher. He's already thrown somebody out at third base. Set to deliver, and that one's fouled away. Three and two. Predominantly throwing fastballs, this young man. We have yet to see an Uncle Charlie. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air, a high fly ball to center field, to the fence, and that one's gone. A three run homer for the Hopkinton Hillers. Ben McKenzie goes yard. What a blast that was past the center field fence. 14 to three, Hopkinton. That's why you at home ought to come down and catch a game. You want to see that kid McKenzie hit, run, play defense, throw runners out. He can do it all. And Coach Simos has him for the next two seasons after this. That was that pasted. Was blast. And he probably won't get the opportunity, but he is only a triple away from the cycle. As Steven Simos will step in. There's a strike. I don't think that uh, gentleman with the white Lexus out there planned on having a ball <laughs> hit near his vehicle. It's now seven runs in the inning for the Hillers. 0-2 oh on Simos. I imagine the Westwood coach has gone through his stable of pitchers this week with all the rainouts. That one's fouled away. Well, I'm sure. And Lead was uh, pretty big heading into the bottom of the fourth, so I think he was uh, pretty conservative with his bullpen. Wow, what a titanic blast by Ben McKenzie. That thing carried a little bit, <laughs> but it was legit. Least. Yep, he uh, connected with that one very well. Can't get much better than that. Wind up in the pitch. That one down low. Stevie Simos is on a little hitting streak here. Set to deliver. Swing strike there. And Simos will take off, trying to beat out the strikeout. Throw to first. They got him. And that will wrap up the bottom of the fourth, but not before the Hiller has played seven more runs. And we will head to the top of the fifth with Hopkinton leading Westwood 14 to three on H camp. Top half of the fifth inning, the Hillers had a huge rally in the bottom of the fourth. They played seven runs and now lead 14 to three against first place Westwood. And the Hillers will now soon have first place in the TVL. As long as they're able to hold this 11-run lead, which I don't think should be too much of a problem. 9-1-2 and two due up for Westwood. John Reisenfeld, Aiden Fitzgibbon, and Anthony Fabiano. That one is outside, 1-0. and oh. Cole Dragsbeck remains in the game for the Hillers. Wind up in the pitch, that one inside. Aside from the hitting a battery, he's been quite effective. Set to deal. There's a strike. A lot of arms and legs coming at you if you're a Westwood hitter. Line up and the pitch. Fouled away. Yeah, he's worked about two full innings and has not given up. Has not well, he's given up a run, but that run was charged to the starter, Brian Gone. 2-2 Two -two pitch to the center fielder. is fouled away into the backstop. And that is right near Bob. Bob had to get out of the way of that one. Wind up in the pitch. Fortunately, it was a grounder. Oh, we'll give him an error on that one. <laughs> 
It was a, it was a good sidestep he had, though. Should have dove for it. I, I think. I think we'll have to put a camera on Bob to uh, watch what he does when a foul ball comes over. On the ground, up the middle, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, they got him. Six to three, throws the center fielder. And that will bring up Aiden Fitzgibbon. So Ace Felder thrown out, Fitzgibbon to the plate. I'm sure the Westwood coach will try and exact some revenge when the Hillers go to Westwood to play. Oh, I'm sure. Of course, Westwood a very good team, but every good team at some point throughout this season is going to have a game or two they would like to just erase from the memory books. Wind up in the pitch, strike two. That's why umpires get paid, is to call strikes at this point in the game. I agree, if it's close, it's a strike. Outside. Alex is nimble, but he's not that nimble. One and two. So the Hill has had two bombs in two days, Alex Reynolds yesterday and Ben McKenzie today. That one just outside, two and two. Yeah, a whole lot of hitting lately for the Hillers, and they are on quite a tear. This will be their sixth win in a row. Fouled into the backstop. The outfield today for the Hillers hasn't seen much action. Yeah, it's been a pretty sound pitching from Brian Gaughan and Cole Drake's back. That's a ball. Hillers Lost the first two games of the season at Medfield Nat Norton. As there's a walk there to Fitzgibbon. It'll bring up Anthony Fabiano, the pitcher, and he will stay in the game to hit. And then after that, they defeated Millis, a game we had for you on HCAM, 7-2, and then Holliston, 6-2. Then a Saturday game on the road against Bridgewater Raynham on April 29th. They won 5-0. Then at Medway, a 3 0 win, which is always impressive. Checking at first, runner back safe. Or a fake over to first. Balked. And yeah, they're going to get him with the block there. I think that's the only thing we haven't had yet in this game, and now we have it. And then after the 3 0 win against Medway, a 4 2 victory in 10 innings at Dover Sherbourne. A big win there. That's a game that was supposed to be at home but moved to Dover Sherborne due to field conditions. That was yesterday on May 2nd. So it's been a uh, pretty good stretch for the Hillers. They have outscored their opponents 25 to six throughout those last five games. And if you include this one, that would make it 39 to nine. That one inside. Westwood runners are not going to take any chances and run into outs. They need runs. Wind up in the pitch. Runner taking off from second. That's a ball. It is a stolen base. I would call that defensive indifference. Drags back set to deal. And Fabiano got a piece of this one, a deep center, but there to make the catch is McKenzie, runner tagging from third will score. Two outs in the inning. Fitzgibbon scores, a sacrifice RBI for Fabiano. And it is now a 14 to four ball game. Ben Shields to the plate for Westwood. Hillers have a collection of players coming in from the warm-up area. He 
He wants to keep him in good shape. Yeah, he always has someone warming up, getting ready. 0-1 on Shields. Well, the Hillers will trade that out for a run. Just need one more out to close this out. Check swing, didn't hold. Oh, they're gonna say he held, I, don't, I disagree with that one. Fouled away, one and two. And believe it or not, Westwood has four runs, but they do not have any base hits. That one just outside, which is very rare with four runs. All the runs that have scored have been either hitters that walked or were hit by a pitch. No base hits for Westwood. That one is a ball just outside. Full count now on Shields. Line up and the pitch. There's ball four, draws the walk. Alex tried to hold it there for an extra second to give the umpire a look. The umpire wasn't going to give it to Cole. Yeah, kind of a harsh call there. Noah Henderson will step in. not being held on the shields the uh, Westwood runner so they're going to give him second base if he wants to take it that one low one and oh but again I don't think they want to end the game with a caught stealing inside two and oh Jake LeBlanc sneaking in behind the runner so Alex loves to throw the ball See what happens here. Drags back set to deal. Ball three. Struggling a little bit here in this fifth inning. Hillers do have a couple pitchers ready. Fouled away, three and one. Two outs, one on, one in for Westwood in this top half of the fifth. But it is a 14 to four Hillers lead. Bob Hamilton on camera, Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklada on the call. And this has been a fun game for Hopkinton. There's ball four. Mitch Carpey down, running down to the bullpen. Just in case uh, Westwood gets another run here and takes the mercy out of play. And we will have a pinch hitter once again. Ryan Shea stayed in the game for Trevor Fahey and took over in right field. He'll come back up for his second time. Flew out his last time up. And Westwood not ready to surrender yet. Going to try to score a couple runs here. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Probably the message from Coach Simos was just throw strikes. You got good defense behind you and let them do the work for you, right? Strike two. Some words of encouragement from the coach seem to always do the trick with this Hillers team. These boys really deserve a victory over this tough Westwood team. Not only are they good baseball players, they're all really, all really good kids, every single one of them. There's no clicks. They are truly a team in every way, and that's the way Coach Simos works. The 0-2 pitch, upstairs, one and two.
horses all around. He will get a piece of this one, and it is off the, I believe, the glove of the shortstop. He was injured on that play, and a run will score. And that is going to make it 14 of 5. And that is going to be an RBI single for Shea. I don't know whether you got that, Bob, but that's a heads up backup by Ryan Wolf, who came all the way in from left field to uh, cover that abandoned base at third. Well, the game continues on as Mark Bernardo will come up to the plate. Got to score that a base hit. Yep, absolutely. That was an awkward play to make. Took an awkward bounce. Runners on second and third, two outs. Shea advanced on the throw over. There's a strike to Bernardo. Well, we have one or two flyouts today. One to McKenzie, was one to Wolf earlier in the game? Or has everything been on the ground? Well, there's been a pair of flyouts. One over to left field, and uh, one over to shallow right. That was caught by the shortstop. One and one count. Not a lot of contact, though, for uh, Westwood. And actually, that was their first hit of the game, the Ryan Shea piece of hitting there, as there's a strike, one and two. I'd give them 12 innings of uh, three hits they've given up, so. Coach Simos has to be happy with his pitching staff. There's strike three. That'll do it for the top half of the fifth. A 14 to five lead for the Hillers. To the bottom of the fifth we go on HCAN. And uh, there's Brendan Kelly going back to his first base coaching's box. Bottom of the fifth inning, the Hillers coming up to the plate. It's nice to see the Westwood uh, Varsity girls uh, softball team here to support the uh, boys varsity team. I uh, can't see any Hopkins and Hiller girls. So I'm not trying to shame them in anything, but uh, it'd be nice to support the boys. Alex Reynolds takes a strike. Well, they, they come to these games a good amount. Sometimes they sit out in the outfield. Sometimes they're over towards the left side. As that one is going to hit Reynolds, he'll get a free pass over to first base. Will the coach uh, pinch run for him again, or can they only do it once in a game? Uh, they can pinch run as much as they want, I believe. Alec Mike will step in. Alex took one for the team there. Jake LeBlanc is two for three on the day. Ball one. How many RBIs does Jake have for today? One RBI on the day, came in the fourth inning. There's a swinging strike. One on, no outs for the Hillers. I believe a run here in this inning would end it. That one inside. That go behind him? Just in front of him. We don't want a Manny Machado incident here. It's only a high school game. <laughs> Dawson McMillan due up on deck. There's a strike there. Two and two on LeBlanc. Looks like Jake wants to end it here with one swing of the bat. Wind up in the pitch, got a piece of that foul. I don't know whether the umpire is going to ask the pitcher to tuck in his shirt, but we'll see. Runner leading off of first, wind up in the pitch, got a piece of this one over to right center, ranging over to make the catch is the right fielder, Trevor Fahey. Runner will. Head back to first. One away, one on, and that'll bring up Dawson McMillan to the plate. We're 
couple sprinkles falling from the these couple of uh, lone rain clouds. McMillan a single and a triple so far. Has an RBI and score to run. Takes strike one there. I think the rumor is that Alex Reynolds will be pitching tomorrow in Ashland. That one outside, one and one. And that would be fun to see. Leonard leading off of first. From the stretch, he delivers. That one's fouled away. One and two. Let's try to see where that one went. <laughs> it's raining a little bit harder here. Maybe we might get a cloud burst and they'll call the game. <laughs> I'd rather have the game continue than get soaked. I'll see you later then. <laughs> that one down low. Two and two. Cole Driggs back due up on deck. So McMillan uh, reach here. Got a piece of this one, and it is fair down the first baseline. The first baseman steps on the back for a one, throws over to second. It got away from the second baseman. Reynolds will hold up, however. So McMillan reaches, or excuse me, McMillan thrown out on three unassisted, two away. That'll bring up Cole Drags back with Reynolds at second. Heads up play by the center fielder to back up that play there. Keep Reynolds at second base. Now one upstairs, 1-0. Oh. Westwood catcher is working hard today. Certainly is. Hillers have 14 runs on 16 hits, and that one is foul. Down the third base side. A little ahead of it. Set to deliver. Got a piece of this one over to center field, but good positioning by Reisfelder, who will make the catch for the out. And that will do it for the fifth inning. To the top half of the six we go. It is a 14-5 Hillers lead over Westwood on HCAM. Top half of the sixth inning. A good turnout here of the Hillers fans. And they're braving through this cold weather. This has been a... Uh, Pretty long game, a whole lot of runs scored. 23 in total between the two teams. Actually, excuse me, 19 in total between the two teams. And the Hillers fans sticking around. This game just uh, over two hours old now as we head to the top half of the six. Seven, eight, and nine hitters due up for Westwood. The shortstop, Brian Guarino, Calum Guarino, the third baseman, and the center fielder, John Reisfelder. As Guarino will step in, and we have a new pitcher for the Hillers. Mitch Carpy in there to take over for Cole Dragsbeck. Dragsbeck gave up a pair of runs last inning, so the Hillers want to make sure they can secure this victory. Mitch Carpy's got a sneaky little fastball and a breaking pitch. That one is down low, 1-0. You can never underestimate a team like Westwood, so certainly got to play until this one's over. That one outside, 2-0. Oh. There's a strike, 2-1. There's strike two. A little extra life on that last five feet of his fastball. And this is going to take a couple hops on the infield grass. Glove by the third baseman, throw to first, no problem. Five to three goes Guarino, one away. 
Dylan O'Leary in the last few games. He's put on his uh, Brooks Robinson outfit, just gobbling up everything over there. Well, that'd be pinch hitter. Hannon will come in for Calum Guarino, or stay in for Calum Guarino over at third base. Actually, he was the uh, relief pitcher as well. Came in to play third base and then came in to relieve the Westwood Fabiano. star, Fabiano. 1-0 is the count. That one upstairs, 2-0. Jack Hannon awaits the pitch. There's a strike. 2-1. Coach Simo seems to have an embarrassment of rich, uh, riches with his pitching staff. That one is over the reach of Dawson McMillan into center field it goes. A single for Jack Hannon and John Reisfelder will come up to the plate. One on, one out for Westwood in the top half of the sixth. There's a strike. Again, Hopkinton is not holding any of the runners on. That one is hit in the air out of play. 0 and 2. So Mitch does not have to worry about picking over because there'd be nobody there. From the stretch, there's a ball, 1 and 2. Alex held it there for an extra second to give the umpire a look, but he didn't get the call. He deals, that one's fouled away, out of play. Looks like Mitch has got a couple different speeds with this fastball. Carpy deals, down the first base side and foul. Taking a look at the upcoming Hillers schedule on May 5th at Ashland, May 8th at Dover Sherborne, then May 10th Medfield at home, May 11th Norton at home. I think the Hillers will be the home team when they go visit Dover Sherborne. And they have a long road stand after that as that one is upstairs. Two and two, May 15th at Holliston, May 17th at Bellingham, and May 19th at Millis, and then you're home against Medway on May 22nd. There's a ball, three and two. We do have a uh, Ashland makeup, or is that for set for tomorrow? It'll be uh, tomorrow's game at Ashland, or Friday's game rather, which is which has a very good chance of getting rained out as Ricefelder draws the walk, two on, one out. Aiden Fitzgibbon will step in. So that will more than likely be postponed unless they end up moving it to Thursday due to the expected rain Friday, but more than likely they'll uh, try to see if they could play it out on Friday, especially since the Hillers have played a good amount of games in the last few days. It's been four games in the past five days for the Hillers. Carpy from the stretch working to Fitzgibbon and that one is fouled away, 0-1. I'm trying to encourage the Hillers captains to uh, grow their hair and grow their beards once prom is over on the 12th be like the 2013 Red Sox and have a little fun in their senior years. That one upstairs, one and one. Well, maybe the more clean cut, like a Yankees kind of team. <laughs> <laughs> On the ground, up the middle, glove by the shortstop. He bobbles it and everybody's gonna be safe. An error by the shortstop. And it's bases loaded, one out for Westwood. Smart base running. For the man on third, Burdick dropped the ball, but he spun around just to see if the 
man on third it started to uh, head down to home. It's a Hiller's third error on the afternoon. Anthony Fabiano steps in and takes ball one. Well, this game's not over yet. You got bases loaded, one out. Big opportunity for Westwood. This is a team that can hit. Got shields on deck. Carpy set to deal. Hit in the air to center field, ranging over to make the catches. McKenzie, but the runner from third will tag and score. It's 14 to six, Hillers. So an RBI sacrifice fly out for Fabiano. As Jack Hanna comes around to score. Anything within a 50 foot radius of Ben McKenzie, he's gonna catch. Maybe I'll up it to 75. Ben Shields will step in to face Carpy. Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike. From the stretch, there's strike two. Oh, and two. Two on, two out. But a run in for Westwood. It's an eight run lead for the Hillers. Carpy deals. And this is going to drop down into center field. And the runner will be stopped at third. So that'll load up the bases. A single for Shields. Fitzgibbon up to second. Bryce Felder up to third. And Carpy will receive some words of encouragement from Jake LeBlanc, the first baseman, and Noah Henderson to the plate. And now Coach Simos, along with Alex Reynolds, will come out and talk to Carpy. And they certainly plan on leaving him in this game, I think, for the duration. You might see a closer if this game does indeed reach the seventh. Noah Henderson having a pretty decent day. Was hit by a pitch scored around in the second. Hit a double in the fifth. On the ground he goes with this one. Glove by the shortstop, throw to first, and they got him. Six to three goes Henderson. That'll wrap up the sixth inning, but not before Westwood plates are on. 14 to six, heading to the bottom of the sixth inning. Bottom of the sixth inning, a 14 to six Hillers lead. Brett McIntyre steps to the plate. Having a pretty good day. He, he takes a ball. He had an RBI double in the fourth. Reached on a fielder's choice in the third. Flew out in the first. He will grace uh, the state of South Carolina. He's heading to Clemson. There's a strike from Jack Hanna. Pitcher for Westwood out for a second inning of work. Or actually, uh, a little more than uh, just a second inning. Came in in the fourth. So that one's low, two and one. Connor Hebert on deck, who had a big double yesterday. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away, third base side. Two and two. certainly got the bats going this afternoon. Some great offensive baseball as this one will take a hop on the infield grass over to short it goes, throw it to first, no problem, one away. First baseman was just able to keep his foot on the bag. And we will have a pinch hitter for the Hillers. Connor Hebert will come in and hit for Chris Burdick. Ryan Wolf is due up on deck, and it appears he'll stay in the game. On the ground, right side, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, a little high, but they got him. Four to three goes Hebert, two away. 
Here comes Ryan Wolf to the plate. He's having a great day at the plate. And he, I think, accidentally got in the lineup as he was placed on the lineup card. And Dylan O'Leary, I think, was supposed to be the hitter, but they kept Ryan Wolf in and it paid off. Big RBI single in the third inning. Walked and scored a run in the fourth. And he'll take ball one there. Ryan has a very high baseball IQ, as do most of the Hiller players. Line up and the pitch. Here's a strike. One and one. Besides playing little league ball, all these kids have played AAU ball. Some have played senior Babe Ruth. Maybe some will play the summer in Legion ball. Another strike there, one and two. And I'm sure many of these guys will be playing for either uh, Ashland Legion or Milford Legion on the Hiller side. And of course, Westwood has a Legion program as well. That one's fouled away. One and two count. Left side on the ground, picked up by the third baseman, throw to first, they got him. Five to three goes Wolf, it's a one, two, three, Bottom of the sixth for the Hillers to the top of the seventh we go. It's Hillers baseball on HCAN. Top half of the seventh inning. Westwood down to their final three outs. Due up is the fifth, sixth, and seventh hitters. Ryan Shea, Mark Bernardo, and Brian Garino. Mitch Carpy stays in the game for another inning of work. Did give up a run last inning but it is a nice, comfortable 14-6 lead for the Hillers as the lefty steps in. Shea hit an RBI single his last time up in the fifth. Line up and the pitch is upstairs, 1-0. I think Coach Simos has a rule that all his players have to be standing up by the uh, dugout fence to see what's going on. There's a strike. If he wants to give them a tip, they're all right there. I think in this uh, cooler weather, you'd want to be standing up. You're sitting down, I think you just get a little bit more colder. That one's down low, two and one. Bob Hamilton, our cameraman, thoroughly enjoying this weather. Wind up and the pitch. That one is fouled away, two and two. Been a fun afternoon for the Hillers fans. A few of them have cleared out, but they stuck around for most of the game. And a good turnout here for this afternoon as that one's ground to the right side. Throw to second, uh, or excuse me, throw from the second baseman to first. And it looked like the first baseman, LeBlanc, got the tag on, but they called him safe. I don't know about that one. I do not know about that one. A throw was off the mark, so that would be an error. Mark Bernardo will come up to the plate. Well, I gave him the benefit of the doubt there, I guess. I'd like to see that replay. That one outside, 1-0. Oh. Jake has made two outstanding plays over at first base in the last couple games, reaching for a pitch, or reaching for balls high, and having the presence of mind come down right on the bag with runners bearing down on him. With Bridgewater Rainham, there was a big guy coming down on him and it was almost a train wreck, but he was able to get the out. Two and one. One on, no outs for Westwood. As this is a grounder left side, glove by the third baseman, throw to first, they get one. Shea advances to second, five to three goes Bernardo. Brian Garino to the plate. It's the fourth 
Hiller's error of the game when Shea reached. Up the middle, gloved by the shortstop, throw to first, and they get the second out. Six to three on that one. Westwood down to their final out. As Jack Hanrahan will step in. Excuse me, Jack Hannon. Line up in the pitch, upstairs. A one and O count. Carpy deals. That one low, two and O. Runner on third for Westwood. Two outs though. Game now over two hours and 20 minutes old. 20 runs scored between these two teams. Quite the offensive affair, especially for the Hillers this afternoon. 3-0 pitch, there's a strike, three and one. Line up and the pitch. Gets a piece of this one. That's going to drop down in a left field. And another Westwood run is around to score. Shea comes around on the RBI single from Hanrin. And that'll bring up John Reisfelder. He's played a nice game in center field. That one is low, 1-0. Fourteen to seven, Hillers up by a touchdown. Fouled away, one and one. I think if you're Carpy at this point, just leave it over the plate. Let your field do the work. Sun seems to be bothering Chris Burdick and Ryan Wolf. Yeah, it's shining right on the field now. Up the middle. Takes a couple hops on the infield grass. The shortstop will handle it himself. Nice job by Burdick tagging the second base bag to get the force out. And that will do it. The Hopkinton Hillers win their sixth game in a row as they take down Westwood by a total of 14 to seven. Quite the offensive performance by the Hillers this afternoon as Westwood Scores seven runs on four hits. There was a lot of walks and interesting situations earlier in this game. Westwood also committed a couple errors. As for the Hillers, they scored their 14 runs on 16 hits and committed four errors. It wasn't the nicest game defensively, but it certainly was a nice game offensively. And Larry, I think uh, the player of the game for this afternoon certainly has to be Ben McKenzie, who went three for four, had a single and scored a run in the first, a double and scored a run in the second, and the three run homer in the fourth. Absolutely. Quite a performance for Ben McKenzie and a number of other Hillers also had multiple hits in this one as well. Well, six in a row for the Hillers. They now are six and two on the season. Westwood is now seven and three on the young season, a 14-7 victory for the Hopkinton Hillers over the Westwood Wolverines. For Bob Hamilton on camera, uh, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching this presentation of Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Take care, everyone, and we'll talk to you again soon.